Welcome everybody. Who's ready to start off this week with a bang? It is Monday, August 31st, and it's going to be a good fucking week. I, I have a good feeling about this. We're almost at fall. Can anybody else believe that 2020 is going into the back end here? Man, what a fucking year. Today's question of the day is, do you control your exercises and movements? Do you feel the muscles moving? Or do you rush through just to get the exercise done and out of the way? If you're on if you're on YouTube, make sure to leave the comment down below. And if you're on one of the podcasting platforms, make sure you go into YouTube. I'll start a thread for it and uh, let's have a conversation. Enjoy the show. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Plants and PRs podcast, the podcast to help you move better, feel better, and in the long run, look a hell of a lot better. My name is Tyler Egan, and today we're going to be talking about getting swole. We're going to talk about getting getting them gains, getting thick. We're getting thick, boy. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done. I'm probably not done. I might say thick boy a couple of times throughout the episode. I'm not going to lie. I don't know why. I just like saying it. I just like saying Who You know what? what you want to know why? Because who doesn't want to be a thick boy? Who doesn't want to be a thick boy? I don't know why I have to say it like that. It's so unnecessary. How the fuck is everybody doing these days? Man, I cannot believe that tomorrow is going to be September. Going into the last... What's that? Four months of the year here. Holy hell. What a year 2020's been, am I right? Holy shit. It's insane to me. Like one one thing my parents used to say to me a lot when I was younger was uh, you know, time flies. Um, that's why you should enjoy it now. Like time really does go by fast. And I never started to realize it until I was working full time and you know, not really in college or school in general anymore. And time really does go by fast, man. That's why we got to live every day like, like, almost like it's our last. You know, there is some validity in those kinds of statements. You know, enjoy every day like it is your last. I mean, because realistically, you never know these days. But let's, let, let's enough about that. Let's, let's get into today's episode. Um, if you are new here, or if you're not, and you just haven't been around in a while, I have been posting the new the episodes up on YouTube as well in, with an audiogram format. Uh, the reason I wanted to do that mostly was because I wanted to start a comment section for the question of the day I started implementing about like a week ago. Um, you know, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on it or just, you know, tell me, just answer the question. You know, we don't really have to go into a conversation. You know, I just would love to hear other opinions at the very least. Um, of course, I want to talk about things more just because I like to have conversation. That's one thing I've definitely found about myself more recently is, you know, I really enjoy talking to humans. Most people are pretty fucking cool. So answer the question of the day. Let's have a conversation. But today I want to talk about time under tension, time, time under tension. And what is it? Um, you know, you, you hear that term being thrown around a lot in the fitness industry. Uh, a lot of people claim it's like the end all be all to grow a muscle. I mean, look, there's a lot of different things you can implement it to gain muscle. There's so much you can do. There's so many different tools and, and things you can implement to help see progress. Uh, I find a lot of validity in time under tension. I think there is more there than people realize. Um, I actually, you know, before doing this, I brought up an article written by Brad Schoenfeld, who is a, I think I said his name right. Um, I'll, I'm going to link the article in the show notes because this was actually pretty good. It was actually like a five-year-old article about the science of time under tension and uh, what's the optimal time under tension for muscle gains. I didn't realize it did those kinds of studies on time under tension. You know, I didn't realize it was being that discussed in the fitness industry, especially five years ago. So this was actually a very interesting article and not necessarily what I want to be talking about today, but I did get a couple of uh, definitions from it. So that's the main reason why I would like to uh, link it. And for, you know, if you guys have the time and you want to, you're into it to check it out. But, you know, what is time and attention? For, to, to me, the way I see it is time and attention is the amount of time your muscles are under stress. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be from any one thing in particular. You know, you can be cables, bands, dumbbells, barbells, kettlebells. Um, body weight movements, you know, just whatever kind of stress you're putting your muscles under. 
uh, that is time under tension, time under tension, and it's, it's the duration of time as well. Um, like, I, like I said in this article, they go on to talk about like 60 to 90 seconds. I think as a total in the in the workout um, is the best time under tension for muscle hypertrophy. Now, if you don't know what uh, hypertrophy stands for, it's a it's a cool word. It, it's spelled like hypertrophy. Um, it's just basically muscle growth to k- put it in its simplest form. Um, and you know, I, I agree. You know, I would agree that time under tension definitely. I mean, they did a whole scientific study basically proving it, but I would agree just from my experiences that time under tension definitely does help with muscle hypertrophy. Um, I really like it for more than just that, though. It definitely works for that, but I, there's a couple of reasons why I like it. And it has to do more with like the mental aspect of it all and, 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 and how things feel. So I think the time, time, I think time under tension is very important to help develop the mind-muscle connection. Now, what's the mind-muscle connection? I mean, it's, you know, if you just take those two words and define them, you could probably figure out. But it's basically just having that connection with the muscle you're working at the time and feeling it contract and relax. Um, contracting is usually the easier of the two evils. A lot of people have a time relaxing muscles, which is also just as important. You know, if you think about some of the things we do throughout the day, our muscles are tense a lot of the time just from sitting, standing, moving in awkward positions. And actually brings me up, brings me to a really good point. I'm reading right now another book by Dr. Kelly Sturat. He's a, a famous physical therapist and he is, I, I guess he would be a strength and conditioning coach as well. Um, his YouTube and Instagram page is the Ready State. Highly recommend you guys check him out. He's got a lot. Of, he's got a lot of good information on there. Um, but right now, I'm reading his book called "Becoming a Supple Leopard," and it's just about moving well and how to optimize performance and stuff like that. And in one of the sections, he's talking about torque and stability at your hips and joints, or I'm sorry, your hips and shoulders. And um, one of the, he said something in here. I highlighted it because I really, really like this. And I think. I hope someone can take something from this just because it's it's huge. It really is. Um, he says, you will express the same movement pattern that you have, you've been practicing dramatically, increasing your risk for injury. So basically just meaning when if you, if you move improperly throughout the day if, and then you go into the gym, you're going to carry all those improper movements over. You know, that's why with the people I work with, I really make sure to, that they understand that. You know, it's about fixing the way you're moving when we're working out, when you're in the gym, uh, wherever you're working out, really. But it's also important to take a look at your habits on a daily basis and see what you're doing. See how you're sitting. Um, see how you're standing. See how you're walking, running. You know, are you, are you, you know, from sitting down, putting our hips in this, this flex position. When we stand up, sometimes our hips stay in that flex position. And that keeps our glute muscles, the most powerful muscle in the body, something I talk about all the time, the most powerful muscle in our body um, turned off, not working. It's not, it's not doing anything while we're walking and moving because we're sitting down for so long and our hips are staying flexed. You know, pointing those things out, recognizing them that you're doing it, and then maybe doing some mobility or maybe like a, a, an exercise throughout the day to combat it. Um, my, my last physical therapist that I went to said that you know, doing like some mobility work and, and things to that effect is just body maintenance. It's kind of like a car. Your car, your body is just like a car. You need to maintain it for it to perform adequately or or optimally. Optim, optimally, optimally. I like that better. If you want to perform optimally, so developing the mind muscle connection is important, and I think time under tension really does help with that. Um, feeling the muscles activate properly and move properly and function the way they're supposed to function definitely has a lot of carryover in everyday activities because one of the things that I've noticed personally is now that I've gained more thoracic mobility, more more upper back mobility, so I have more rotational movement um, in the, the, the upper part of my back, my upper part of my torso, because I have all this now, I can catch myself while I'm at work sitting there on a computer, slouched over, typing away. You know, I correct myself. I extend through the, my spine. I brace my core a little bit to give myself some stability down there so that I'm not, I'm not crunching into my low back and just causing mayhem, which is one of my biggest issues. And it's, it's made a world of difference. It's made a world of difference when it comes to my back pain. So catching yourself throughout the day is important, but I think 
developing this mind-muscle connection with muscles to really understand how they're supposed to move and feel is important for that because it does carry over in the gym. And one of the ways that that can, one of the ways that you can work on your mind-muscle connection is through time under tension. With some of the way I, sometimes the way I program, especially with new people, is I'll give them like a three-second eccentric or four second, five, whatever, whatever they need, you know, or I'll put times down so that they know like, you know, the, the eccentric part, the negative portion. So if we're doing a, a dumbbell bench press, as you're lowering the weight down, that's the eccentric. So a three second eccentric, a one second hold, and then I'll, I'll give them like a one second, one second concentric or a two or three, whatever the case may be, just so they know how long it should be taking them. They can almost, you know, the slower it is, the more you can feel those muscles. Sometimes you'll feel a stretch and all these things, and it, and it, and it all helps develop that mind muscle connection with the muscles you're working, which can lead to better movement patterns throughout the day, every day, all day, which will lead you to moving better all the time and just being happier because you're not in fucking pain all the time. It's amazing. It's amazing how well you feel when you understand how the muscles are supposed to work right and they actually do it really is amazing it, you know it's one of the the biggest things that i've i've gained this year was just understanding how well my body's supposed to move and getting it there and i've never felt better and that's why i really want to help people that's why i say it in the beginning of every podcast episode you know not every episode may be about these things but like I really do want to help people move and feel better and when I say feel better I don't necessarily mean feel better in the sense that like you like the way you look I mean I think if you move better it'll help you feel better and I just mean like you're not in pain all the time you're not always like bloated or 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 whatever the case may be you feel good all the time I promise looking better is a byproduct of those two things so Developing the mind-muscle connection to understand how muscles are supposed to move and feel is so important, and one of the best ways that I think you can do that is through time under tension. Oh, man, that was a lot. Woo! So in this article, one thing I wanted to hit on here, too, was um, they, uh, Brad, Do- he's actually a doctor, so Dr. Brad Schoenfeld goes on to say in this article, that uh, the more appropriate term to time under tension would actually be time under load, which makes sense because if you're doing, you know, some dumbbell bench presses, you're you have load in your hands, i.e., the dumbbells. So he puts uh, a more appropriate term would be time under load, which reflects the actual time spent in a given set, irrespective of the weight lifted. So I would agree with him. Time under load like, makes a lot more sense. It does. I mean, he's a doctor. He's a lot more educational on this. He's been in the industry a lot longer than me, so. I refer to him when it comes to a lot of things. He's actually, I've, I've, I've read other studies by him before. He's a very, very smart and knowledgeable guy. Um, you can get a lot of good information from him as well. So I actually think I'm going to wrap the episode up there today, guys. This is a, this is actually a pretty short one, um, which I'm cool with because I think I got my point across. And I hope you guys took something from this. And if you did, i really appreciate it if you could like, share, rate, review, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, If you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be having uh, all the podcast episodes posted probably the night of the day I posted it, if that made sense. Um, I post everything uh, every morning, and then I'll probably be able to get to the YouTube videos that night unless I have time sooner. So they'll be posted there. I'll also be posting other content on YouTube as well. Um, If you want to answer the question of the day and have a conversation or just answer it, um, go to the YouTube video that'll there will be a link to that in my instagram bio all of the links to my social media will be down below along with my youtube channel so you could just click that link and i will check you guys out in the next episode peace